Okay, I think I may be live. Um, if I am, uh, this is my first time giving a presentation of this sort. It sort of feels a little strange. I attended the last year's Our Networks, I guess, gathering or conference and was super excited and um, enthusiastic about things I saw. So when this year came up again, I decided I would just sort of throw my uh, hat on the in the ring or whatever weird broken um, metaphor I just mixed up there. Uh, <laughs> but I, I was just reviewing some of the Our Networks um, sort of and forgive me if I'm looking at different screens here. This is weird, not actually looking at faces. Um, but yeah, the, the sort of our networks being about building our own network infrastructures, I thought I would sort of walk you through my personal journey in something uh, self-directed learning and the focus I've taken recently on peer learning and how uh, self-directed open learning intersects with uh, online community networks and some of the networks that I've tried to set up and that you're all welcome to join if <laughs> any of what I say uh, now uh, is exciting to you. Um, so I guess the title of my talk, if you want to call it a talk, is Open Learning Commons, uh, Peer-to-Peer Educational Ecosystem. Uh, so actually, I guess I should mind my screen sharing here. This is technically the website. So this is my own sort of self-directed learning attempt in learning how to set up websites and administer them and bring together volunteers and all these sorts of things. So this site here is still pretty crude. It's made using a, a CMS called Grav and it is was originally sort of put together by uh, the stewards, what we, we were calling ourselves the stewards uh, of, of the Open Learning Commons or an Open Learning Commons. Um, the concept is actually a kind of a combination of a bunch of things. So um, maybe if I explain that, it sort of will give more context. I guess the other context I should have gave was I was originally hoping for this talk to be more of a sort of open discussion, uh, something similar maybe to a panel, but just kind of open to anyone. But we're going to have to roll with the punches here, because that's, I guess, not going to be easy. So if you have questions, I guess, uh, put them in chat, and uh, Gary will uh, help me out with that later. So the name Open Learning Commons is a combination of a bunch of things. One, open learning. So this sort of comes from uh, history of pedagogy and um, I'm not I'm not a, an ap academic, so if it sounds like it, that's that's why. Uh, I'm just sort of stumbling through a lot of these things, as I said, in my own sort of self-directed pathway. Um, yeah, it's just the idea of, of of learning openly and also creating open educational resources, and then learning commons, very similar to a uh, say a community network, which I know is um, very very popular um, amongst the attendees. Um, but a learning commons very often is well, typically found, say, in a public library. Uh, it's an open space to go and learn and use resources and uh, meet people, play games, all kinds of different things. So my thinking was that um, why not have a sort of digital version of that, which I guess is sort of what we're doing here. And just the focus is the focus is on a talk and on a whole bunch of different things. Um, so basically, my thinking, uh, maybe I should start back with a little more history. Um, I sort of wasn't, haven't been a long time, long time um, internet or even uh, social media user. I didn't discover any of that until maybe 2012 with Google+, Plus, which I, I think is pretty late. But I did discover um, some community networks on there and discovered, at that time, was doing self-directed learning um, with these things called massive online open courses, which emerged at the time. And I was uh, taking a, a, a program at the University of Waterloo for mechanical engineering and got swept up in being much more interested in other things than what I was learning. So I started taking um, these MOOCs online and learning about um, other forms of MOOCs, such as the C MOOCs and X MOOCs, were much more about sort of peer produced or, or uh, connectivist versions of, of these rather than, say, just a bunch of videos in a directory. And 
yeah, discovered um, my core interest. One, um, many, many refer to it as uh, collective intelligence. And it was actually through a collective intelligence community on Google Plus that I met most of the sort of people I've played with in the online space for years now and sort of found my way to the P2P and D-Web space, um, which is how I intersected with the people I now know from Toronto Mesh and um, the Our Networks community. Um, I'd say I'm still somewhat of a, an outsider, so that's uh, likely you can tell my talk isn't nearly as technical as Brian's, which was great to have been able to look at that uh, just before popping on here. Um, so yeah, there's this idea of commons-based, maybe I should move this screen here so it looks a little more natural, uh, commons-based peer production. So basically, my thinking is that um, for doing self-directed peer learning, you could do it within a community context. And um, the point of Open Learning Commons is like a, a community network to provide you with some of the sort of infrastructure and other tools to facilitate yourselves and, and the co-learning groups that you form to sort of facilitate yourself through the learning you desire. So you'll see on this homepage is our, a bunch of the open source tools that um, I've began to host. And the I can run through them quick and why I think they're useful, but you can find this little table here at openlearning.cc. Um, so there's similar to the rocket chat being used in, in our networks. There's Mattermost, which is another uh, open source um, team chat tool. Uh, the other thing I should point out is, or shout out is the Digital Life Collective, which you'll see here in this domain. Um, they were very generous and helpful. I'm a member of their cooperative and they uh, are currently hosting some of the open source tools I'm gonna show you here. Uh, so I'll just open a bunch of them up and sort of walk through why I think they're useful in self-directed peer learning groups in, in facilitating themselves. So here's um, a Mattermost space. Um, there's an Open Learning Commons section on here. This is technically uh, lives within the Digital Life Collective space. And then from here, we have um, all kinds of channels. And actually, this, this space has been a little dormant recently, but you might imagine that different peer learning groups can use this for doing real-time coordination. Um, then there's WeCan, which is kind of an open source Kanban board. So once, I guess, you get more serious with your peer learning groups, you might want to transition to uh, deeper coordination together, maybe assigning each other tasks or to-dos, uh, or even just sort of holding each other accountable for um, even your own, say, self-professed learning goals. Um, uh, there's CodeMD, which is a open source markdown editor. It's actually what we used um, to create the markdown of this website. Not that it's <laughs> anything to be super proud about. It's it's a very basic one. But um, so that's this first one here, Grab, is a markdown CMS editor. Um, then there is a discourse forum for that sort of houses a bunch of different learning communities, which I'll talk about or highlight um, soon. Uh, there's not currently that many co-learning groups or communities within the Open Learning Commons at this point, but uh, it's definitely open, open for more or whoever shows up. Um, the other tool that I'm super excited about or, or piece of software is the Federated Wiki. It's, it's um, very useful for doing sort of personal knowledge management. It kind of is quite a twist on what you might be familiar with with wikis, uh, where you sort of collaboratively write and sort of edit over top of each other. In this case, you have your own personal space that only you can edit, but it lives within the context of a, a group or what they call a farm for collaborative editing. Um, and it actually works very much like uh, uh, more like a Git repo, because if you find, just say I'm uh, exploring through uh, different pages, these aren't all mine. If I find a page that I really like, I can um, I can just fork it and it pull it into my own personal website. 
uh, Federated Wiki is a bit of a complex one that I'm not going to uh, explain too much more about here, um, just to move on. Um, so I think I went through the whole list here. So the the notepad, yeah. And I'm, I apologize for the really painful <laughs> presentation or talk. I, I um, you might tell I'm a little ill-prepared. I more or less wanted to set up, um, set the context for a group discussion, but um, I'll just keep going. As you might expect, peer learning um, is a slight sort of twist on um, just maybe traditional education um, in the in that sense, um, the idea is basically that uh, the peers who are interested in, in learning any one particular uh, concept, they can go out and curate for themselves resources um, uh, rather than, say, going back to school or going to formal um, education or what they want to learn. Um, uh, yeah, so in terms of my history around these concepts, I've been very inspired by both Howard Rheingold and Douglas Engelbart. Um, and Howard Rheingold, it was actually after taking a course that he runs in that's uh, a very sort of, it's, where is it here? Yeah, and I can share all these links um, afterwards if, if anyone needs. I took a course from Howard called the New Literacy of Cooperation, which was really cool. But what was different about it was that the course was run in um, in a, a different way than you might be useful, used to. They actually, the group behind a lot of this thinking that inspired me actually coined a term called pedagogy, which is kind of a twist on pedagogy, um, meaning, yeah, that you sort of, in a sort of peer-to-peer decentralized way, you sort of take out the third party of the teacher and sort of try and try and do things um, uh, together yourselves. So this peergoji.org is really cool. The the group Howard and some of the early um, people working on this idea of peergoji actually co-wrote um, a, a sort of whole handbook for this style of learning. Um, and I've attended some of their uh, talks and things, so very much um, inspired me around the play that I've been doing with Open Learning Commons uh, to try and actually it was out of uh, the Howard Rheingold course. Um, once it ended, I kind of wanted to keep the fun going. So that's in many ways where um, Open Learning Commons emerged out of. Uh, there's also, I would say, um, Ah, so the, the bigger picture, if I'm being super ambitious about where this all leads, um, and I definitely see it as a, I call it an open learning commons because uh, I haven't really been thinking of it as like, a, um, it's more of a concept or an idea or a class of things or a pattern than it is say a, a startup or a some sort of um, media, <laughs> Uh, production outlet or something, but thinking is that basically there's a bunch of different uh, co-learning groups that um, that um, maybe are vaguely aware of each other, but th they're organized based on their topic of interest. Um, and as a bunch of, of these coalesce and they start curating and collecting their knowledge gardens, whether it's in uh, Wikipedia or on their own, say, Federated Wiki or wherever they decide to coordinate themselves, um, the idea with Open Learning Commons is to sort of teach some of the patterns around, say, how do you do your own sort of self-hosted uh, um, peer learning infrastructure? And so if we can lower the barrier, say, to entry to that, uh, then lots of these co uh, co-learning groups can sort of emerge. And uh, the thinking is over time, they start to cross-pollinate and maybe share best, best practices. I tried to pull up... Um, link earlier before jumping in here, there's this idea, I think from Douglas Engelbart, called the networked improvement community. And basically the thinking is that at these more uh, abstract layers, when you, if you can start sharing sort of best practices and protocols, then you can sort of cross pollinate your learnings. Even if I'm learning, say, about mathematics and you're learning about, um, I don't know, art 
art history or, or I don't know, whatever it is that we could sort of share our learnings around, hey, well, it's kind of why I was showing some of these tools is that maybe they represent a sort of first go at some of the tools you might need and then have some wiki style walkthroughs of how to set them up yourself and um, how to get in touch with, with others or how to host a, um, a conference call and um, coordinate. So in any case, <laughs> I'm rambling now, but the, the group that uh, the co-learning group I've put most time into recently is is something called Metacog. So we've done this, we've um, sort of replicated the patterns that I had done for Open Learning Commons, and we have also a, a grab site and sort of have tried to set a simple little example of how to sort of put yourself out there as a sort of public co-learning group um, open to others joining. So the Metacogs group is a play on words for um, augmenting metacognition or augmenting any uh, collaborative uh, anything. So augmenting through tools or social practices. Yeah, so I'm gonna stop rambling by basically saying, I, <laughs> and, and I guess finishing the talk and saying that, uh, I guess the big dream is, yeah, that all of this becomes uh, nicely woven sort of open educational resources that, um, that like Wikipedia um, are sort of creative commons and out there and and that it's, uh, I call it, or they wanna reference the concept of commons-based peer production, just thinking that wouldn't it be great if um, we can all sort of stand on the shoulders of giants and build off of each other's knowledge and things and, um, and yeah, basically have uh, some of the best educational resources curated by peer groups and shared openly as open educational resources. Ah, okay, I'll stop there and see if there's questions. Oh, awesome, thanks Robert. Um, I, I guess I have a question and also I would invite everyone, anyone uh, to ask a question for Robert in chat. Um, you, you mentioned this idea of knowledge gardens and I think there's something very interesting about that as a, as a kind of metaphor, I guess, for what um, you're trying to cultivate. And I'm really curious to know, like, what are the other um, metaphors or things that you've seen emerging amongst the group that has really uh, caught on or maybe not have caught on <laughs> less so? Um, yeah, I was just wondering how have you been uh, kind of seeing that change or transform over time? Yeah, um, well, definitely, actually, the I use the word knowledge garden because it's uh, it comes from I think it comes from somebody named Jack Park who's also a sort of Douglas Engelbart um, um, I don't know what to call it follower or he's, he's kind of my hero I'm sure he's Jack's hero as well but he he coined this term and it, it derived from something called the dynamic knowledge repository from Engelbart which was I guess more of a techie or mechanic metaphor for, or mechanical metaphor in a way compared to a garden for how, how we can sort of, yeah, uh, curate knowledge resources and, and share them amongst ourselves. So, um, sorry, were you asking if there's other good metaphors or just to sort of play with that mean, the meaning of that one? Um, yeah, like if there are other metaphors or has there been like an evolution or different ones have, have been kind of circulating amongst um, the community? Yeah, well, I think, the knowledge gardening one, because uh, I do participate in a lot of, say, online communities that talk about peer learning and sort of, uh, yeah, cross pollination. So I think in a garden, the other fitting metaphors are the sort of the pollinators and the sort of so you can play different roles within, a, a, say, a community garden. So I think it it fits really well. And the the other one I've heard used is say, say weaving, but I think that's more in say like community network weaving than than say say, weaving knowledge resources or something like that. Cool, and, and I have, have a few more questions. Sure. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, and maybe this kind of speaks to how we kind of intersected uh, over the past couple of years. Um, you, you kind of showed this list of um, kind of tools, um, open source tools, I assume, for mm -hmm. kind of supporting this, um, this commons. And I, wonder about um, maintaining these tools um, and then support and kind of longevity 
of folks who want to contribute back to these tools or want to see these tools kind of perpetuate over time. Has there been like a lot of thoughts or maybe different kind of discussions around that? Oh, yeah. And because I'm in many ways such an amateur to some of these things, I definitely have fears of like, oh, I don't want a huge, huge group, say, relying on just me, some novice sysadmin and hosting a bunch of their, say, open source stuff. So um, yeah, the, some of my thinking around that and, and and because I get to talk about this sort of thing with within a co-learning group, it's sort of very meta in a way where I have a co-learning group within uh, this thing um, called, that called Open Learning Commons and that uh, co-learning group talks very much about uh, uh, pedagogy and, and these sorts of things. Uh, so I get to say, discuss what you just said and realize that, yeah, some of the, maybe a pattern we could steal or not steal or, or copy is from the federated wiki world where how it works is there's, and actually I guess in the gardening metaphor, what they call farms. So you have a wiki farm and what that enables you to do is host a bunch of people's wikis. but and it's really just some text and some JSON files. But uh, if it doesn't get too big, then it's probably not that burdensome. But yeah, my thinking is that, uh, especially with something like Federated Wiki, is maybe you only get so big as you need to get big. It's not trying to be this Facebook style thing. Uh, and then if you're sharing about how you did what you did, then others can just copy it if they're maybe not feeling so comfortable about relying on all their data being hosted by um, uh, I don't know. I think if you keep it small and more local, then you probably know the person. Or ideally, you would sort of know the person from your community network who's maybe helping to host things. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully that got to something of what you asked. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I think at a meta level, we're, we're kind of describing like tools to help support the commons, and then the tools themselves being learning. Um, catalysts um, mm. or canvases um, to actually understand like the construction or the kind of behaviors of this group or of this comments. I might be totally like misinterpreting, but that's my <laughs> read on it so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very much inspired by uh, commenting and Ostrom's thinking on a lot of these things. Um, and I, as I said, I'm not an, an academic, so I've in a way, I've only skimmed the surface of a lot of things I'd lo I'd like to learn. So maybe that I go. I think it's probably a big part of why I created this. I just I'm a super curious person, want to learn about a lot of things. So uh, just trying to do that. Yeah. Cool. Um, so just had a had a thought around what you were mentioning about finding this group of uh, uh, that that's kind of invested in this, and you you're mentioning Google Plus, I believe. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, that was the first, say, uh, <laughs> online network I joined. Yeah. And it was on the topic of collective intelligence and wisdom. And I kind of wonder, like, how did you kind of stumble <laughs> in those, into that uh -huh. community? And I, I'm kind of asking this question, speaking as someone who has really stumbled into some <laughs> really kind of peripheral things that, uh, that uh, maybe are, are kind of trails less traveled and then finding my way back to like uh, some grand narrative of like being involved in this space. But I was wondering like, is there a, uh, kind of a story there or something that yeah. helped like, like around that? Wait, I, I, I realized I recently, cause this naming of open learning commons um, was just a recent-ish one, but I realized looking back that I've been sort of on this thread for since I first joined that first, say, uh, online network. Uh, and it was through um, both, I guess I was dabbling in self-directed learning then, even though I probably didn't have those words at the time, um, watching both TED Talks and, uh, like I said uh, earlier, uh, MOOCs or massive online open courses. Uh, and I think it was actually a Clay Shirky talk, TED Talk, that talked about cognitive surplus um, that really excited me. He talked about how many man hours or how many human hours it took to create the resources at that time for Wikipedia. And then he showed this little graphic. So that was one little blip was like a one Wikipedia worth of, of human hours. 
and then he showed just how many people spend watching commercials just in the United States on a weekend. And it was like this massive blob that engulfed the, the tiny little one Wikipedia worth of time. So yeah, that the idea of cognitive surplus led me to collective intelligence and then wanting, I don't know, in this very sort of create a co-learning group for yourself mentality, that's, uh, I just happened to be playing on Google Plus and they came out with a communities uh, sort of feature. So I created a community to try and find others who were interested in collective intelligence. And it just happened that someone else had already created one. So that's sort of the story behind um, that. But it was actually through that community that I met uh, Connor Turland, who introduced me to a bunch of people, wound up being on um, a few different projects, some open source software projects, uh, the MetaMaps project, the Holochain project, which led me to sort of, so it's kind of threads all the way back to finding sort of the P-Web, uh, P2P D-Web space, and eventually, yeah, TL Mesh and our networks and all that good stuff. Cool, you, you probably have a really clear and succinct story and thread there. I clearly do not have that ability of recalling like how I uh, kind of ended up doing things I do, but that's another story. Um, we do have a question here for from uh, Make World. Um, any reason of picking Mattermost over uh, chats like Robin Chat, et cetera? Um, not too much. I, I, most of the tools in, well, again, in a very sort of self-directed exploratory way was I just put them up myself to dabble with them and learn their affordances and what they're capable of. The one I'm, I've played very little with Rocket Chat, but the one I'm more excited about now is obviously Matrix Element and uh, because it's, it's uh, has some very interested, interesting ways that rooms can exist in multiple communities. So it sort of fits better with that. Yeah, that sort of holonic knowledge garden sort of uh, potential that you might you might join a room that's in four or five different communities. Um, yeah. Cool. I just realized that I totally uh, missed another question about that. Uh, in Ontario, the sharing or pro promotion of OER has been formalized through or just like eCampus Ontario. Any thoughts uh, are you sustainability versus community ownership? Uh, I might have, might have to read. It's in the uh, P2P party space. I might have to read that again, or have you say it again? Uh, oh, I, I have it here. I'll just reread it. I missed a bit of what you said. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I I don't know too much about eCampus Ontario, and I, I think I'm misinterpreting the question around sustainability versus community ownership. I don't know if you have a read on on that, Gary, uh, what that might mean. Is it basically that if, this, if the resources are just sort of scattered around in these sort of co-learning commons that they might just disappear at some point, I guess, um, which, which um, yeah, it, I guess it, it makes sense to me. That, the open learning commons at this point is still pretty early stages and emergent and sometimes sort of feels like fledgling or like a, a ghost town or something. But yeah, I guess as long as as long as there's the energy between some of the communities out there to keep things going and keep sharing, then it, it will live on. Or be sustainable, I guess, if I interpreted that right. Well, um, I know that we're kind of coming at the time, and I see folks are typing in chat. But Robert, you're also in that live stream channel, so yeah. um, I think folks can still uh, ask questions and follow up with you. Yep, and yeah, I guess I will. Well, I'm in the chat too, so I'll maybe just take all the links I had open in my browser here. It's a pretty poor presentation, just browser tabs, but uh, I'll share those and, and yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Robert. Cool. Thank you.